Hello, everyone. Good morning. I hope you're all doing well. Today, we're sp specifically focusing on beauty businesses and businesses in the beauty industry um, and how to position your beauty business for success. So we will be speaking to, so let me go into a little bit more detail on, on your host today. Um, my name is Wendy Akomalafe Kalu. Um, and also we have Zainab, who is, she's not on the call yet, but she'll be joining very shortly. So yes, yeah, she, she's gonna be talking us through everything that Flutterwave has available for you as a business owner or business founder that you can take advantage of right now to grow your business, to generate more revenue, so you get more visibility for your business as well. Um, so I mentioned Nancy already, but I just to give you a little bit more context into who she is. She is the vice president of Xiaomi Group, um, they're a skincare wellness company in Africa, in West Africa and Nigeria. She's also a speaking, a seasoned speaker. She leads sessions at, um, at Beauty Fest Africa, biggest green beauty events. She's a wife and a mother, and also very passionate about women's development. She started her career in cosmetic science at Black Up. If you know Black Up, you know that Black Up is a makeup brand and she has worked her way up which is why she's one of the most qualified people to give us kind of insights into how to position and grow your business as a beauty entrepreneur so quick house rules and um yeah sorry there's a slight mistake here but basically we're going to go into we were in our quick intro right now and then we're going to go into a Q&A session with Nancy and then we'll do Flutterwave session, which Zainab will be holding. And then we'll go into a general Q&A. So you are allowed to ask questions all through. Please make sure you use the Q&A function to ask questions because that is where we'll be pulling the questions from to answer the questions. So if you have questions on your specific beauty um, company or if you have questions on anything really, we're happy to answer as long as I mean, yeah, Nancy is going to answer your questions and we will answer as well to the best of our ability. So another thing is our webinar is currently being recorded. This is something that you should know. And we will send out the recording for those people who may have internet issues, may not join us early, who may have dropped off. We're going to be recording and sending you the link. But if you don't get the link or you want to see our previous webinars, you can go on our YouTube and search for Flutterwave. Um, I click on the Grow My Business webinar playlist. We have a whole playlist for every single webinar that we have done. We've also included some of the workshops that we've done for other countries as well on how to sell online. Uh, you can ask all your Q questions in the Q&A section, like I said, but you can use the chat function to relate with other webinar attendees. And obviously you can use that to re respond to speakers' requests as well. And then if you have a specific issue, if we're not able to get to your question, if maybe we don't have enough time, you can email us, hi at Flutterwave Go, or send us a direct message on Twitter. We are at FLW support on Twitter for all issues and all additional questions. Or if we say we need a little bit more context into your question to be able to help you, um, you can email us or DM us. We'll be able to assist you that way. Um, I think that is basically all. So I'm going to go into... Oh yeah, Zainab is now with us. Um, but I'm going to go straight into the Q&A section with Nancy so that we don't waste time. We're just going to go straight into it. And I hope that you find this very helpful. Okay. Um, hi, Nancy. Hi, Yondi. Hi. Could you just give us a little bit of background on, I know I've talked a little bit about who you are, but your background into your career and your companies and stuff. Okay, so um, we run Charm Beauty Limited, and under Charm Beauty Limited, we have um, a couple of arms. And these arms, the the reason why we built these arms were because they, there was a big gap in the market catering to these needs. So first off, we like to look at lifetime value of one client. For instance, you have a lady who comes to meet you. Uh, she's pregnant, etc., or she's just about getting married. She gets married and, you know, she uses your products or she uses your makeup brand and that's where it ends. But for us, no. So we looked at how to expand this lifetime value. And so we have Charm Beauty, that caters that provides skincare and wellness solutions, people of the earth. Uh, we have Charm Baby, 
that now caters to the baby that the lady has later on. We have charm men that caters to her husband or caters to her brood or her baby daddy. And then we have charm labs for beauty enthusiasts because we realize that, you know, there's truly in knowledge, in getting knowledge, proper knowledge, you know, for beauty professionals. And this is why we're looked at sometimes as um, people who didn't go to school, ETC. So to bridge that gap, we created Charm Labs. It's a research and development arm of Charm Beauty. And so people can get genuine knowledge and then improve on their crafts as they go along. Um, our mission actually is to provide well-being um, for people of the earth. And we do this through um, exceptional experiences. So the thing here is exceptional experience can be anything for you. It could be subjective. It could be um, the way you feel when you use our body wash. It could be um, the experience, you know, getting the product in the first place. It was easy. Delivery was sharp. It was quick. And so this is what we aim to do through our mission statement. And how we've been able to drive this is, one, we remember this is something that we quote on a daily basis. We're stewards of the earth first. And so we care for our community and the earth and we look out for carbon footprint etc we're not just producing uh, products that help people and then damage the earth no we also bank a lot on teamwork we are uh, a team through and through and a accountability we're accountable to um the team we're accountable to people who we serve you know in the community next up we have respect for people i think that that is such a huge thing and um it also informs the way we cater to our clients. So you would never see us, you know, say shut down someone's concern because we feel like, you know, this is how we want to do things. We have respect for people's opinions. We have respect for people's preferences. And so we have a will to win. We would never say, you know, I never ever take no. And then lastly, we have fantastic. I choose to believe that we try to um, nurture fantastic client relationships. It is a big deal for us. And if we're supposed to meet lifetime value we need to remain in connection with our clients so that's that about charm beauty thank you that's very in-depth also i like the fact that basically at every stage of the woman's like journey when she yeah. when she's single when she's married yeah. when she, has, she can just come to charm beauty and be like i want stuff for my kids i want stuff for my husband and and like you're basically but i know that did you always start off um, catering mm -hmm. to every need or what did you start off with? So as a business mm -hmm. owner or beauty um, entrepreneur, um, many times some people want to start small or they yeah. want to go big. What, what do yeah. you think if you are going to say going big versus starting small, which one do you think has been more beneficial in your journey? I would, I would say find your why. There must be a big why. And so even as we have... Um, created lifetime value. There is a why. And so people, when they say charm beauty, there's something else to it. Nobody's going to say, oh, charm beauty, they provide skincare and that's it. No, they provide sustainable skincare. That's what we're known for. They provide natural skincare. That's what we're known for. Don't shift from your why. You know, everything else can adjust, but there must be a why. So we have that why and it's such a strong why. Uh, we would uh, rather have, you know, clients go find what they're looking for somewhere else than switch on that why, because that's why we're in business. We provide sustainable skincare. If it is not sustainable, if it is not something that we can source from um, um, our community around us, if it is not something that, you know, we can have people find somewhere else and not necessarily depend on our products, so long as we solve that issue we're not doing it. So you must have a strong why. And so start from that why. And it begins to blossom from your why. So you don't have to do um, many arms. It takes a lot of stress. It takes a lot of resource. It takes a lot of mental work to be able to create those arms. And it didn't come, you know, in just one day. We've been doing this for tons of years. So take your time, but stick to your why. Take your time and stick to your why. I feel like that's a quotable that we can, we, we can take from this. Thank you for that. Um, so you've been talking about how Charm Beauty is a sustainable brand across the board. Yeah. Can you break down what sustainable beauty means? We're in Nigeria. Where, well, 
I'm in Nigeria and you're in Nigeria as well, but in mm-hmm. Africa where there's not a heavy um, emphasis being placed on sustainable beauty or sustainable fashion or even mm-hmm. sustainable lifestyle. Um, mm-hmm. Can you break down what sustainable beauty means in mm-hmm. your particular regard? Okay, so it's, it's basically just about intentionality here and then um, looking at how, you know, production and your business affects the affects your community and affects the world. Take, for instance, nobody looks at it this way, but you're working with chemicals and you're pouring this down the drain and regardless of whatever you think, it's going to block some, uh, what's the name, some gutter somewhere. And, you know, children are going to maybe claim that some kids who do not have, you know, um, enough protection, parental, they're going to play in that. It's going to affect people. Take, for instance, the air that we even ingest all the time. Remember when we just started this lockdown? Did you see how clear the sky looked at some point? It was because people were not manufacturing strange stuff as much. And so sustainable beauty is subjective to everybody, and it's something that anybody can embrace look for ways to reduce carbon footprint. If you do not need to import something, don't import it, locally source it. So take, for instance, someone who goes all the way to Badagri to go get coconuts, or someone who has to import from China. If you get some stuff here and use it and it gives you the same effect, why don't you try to source it from here and reduce carbon footprint uh, in the long term and also help your community? So that's what sustainable beauty is about. It's just reducing carbon footprint and being um, empathetic to how your processes affect other people's lives, you know, in the long term. Thank you for that. So if you are going to go a little bit more specific with your products, mm-hmm. you, I know mm-hmm. you don't import your ingredients and, your, and everything that your products contain from outside. Try to reduce it and try to keep it local. Obviously, that is a sustainable way to build a beauty business. Um, mm-hmm. But can you give an example of something that you have locally sourced versus importing it? And then what, what has that process been like for you? Mm. Okay. Um, it would be something as simple as um, um, soda ash, for instance, uh, that we use to make soaps. So um, this was something that we had to import you know, consistently for a long time. And um, we ha- also had to import our routine because of the um, quality of our routine you get from, you know, outside there. However, we did our research and we realized that beer berry can give you the same effect as our routine can. And our routine here is a skin active that brightens naturally, you know, without having to use hydro. Um, because, you know, people were hell bent on getting our routine from out there because it did fantastic work. We had to look in there we can actually source beer berries from around here and we don't have to import chemically made our routine. So what we did was we went right to the source and we began to use beer berry and we still got the same effects and we had less carbon footprint. It also saved us money and it helped for us to spread this funds, you know, within Africa and not taking it outside, you know, um, outside Africa. So that's one way we've been able to, um, save on that. And then uh, let me give you another instance. This one was, um, like I mentioned, soda ash. Previously, we would import soda ash. And I thought about it, please. The people who can actually make Castile here, and this is um, soap-free soap, because most of us have extremely sensitive skin because of toxicity in these areas. And so we looked at, you know, um, creating our own soda ash or creating our own soap-free um, soap. It took a while. It took me about a, a year to master. So it wasn't like I just um, came upon sustainable beauty. There's, you know, there are people who are even more advanced than I am at this. It's literally just 70%, you know, we've been able to say. However, the thing is intent here and constantly looking for ways to, you know, just cut down on carbon footprints consistently. So uh, when you're done producing your products, ETC, and you're just marketing, you need some, some time to just sit down and say, you know, how can I improve on ethical practice here? How can I improve on the way um, my business impacts the world here? What am I living for? Is it just to make money and to make people happy? Is there any form of impact to my business? If there's none, you haven't lived well. So make sure that you get these pockets of time, say once in two months or once in three months, where you just look through your entire 
uh, business plan and your business processes and look for ways to be more impactful uh, with you know your dealings in business. Thank you for that. That's very, I think that's very helpful. It also shows that you, the ways that people can also apply, if you're not doing yeah. it now, you can plan for it in the future. So I have two more questions for you, but, but just for our attendees to let you know that we, yes, we are recording. And if you have questions, please use the Q and A function to ask your questions. We'll get to your questions very shortly. Um, okay. My next question, Nancy, is yeah. how, does a beauty business or how does someone that wants to start off a beauty business how do they go about getting funding or mm. how have you gone about getting funding in, in the past mm. 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 okay so this is a question that i get all the time uh the thing is nobody's going to fund a business that you're not even confident about and if you've not done the work please don't expect people to fund your business you would have to make the sacrifice of funding yourself so you believe in this business strong you know strongly enough you need to be willing to have done the work enough for you to say you know what i'm going to take out my my savings not someone else's money and i'm going to take a chance not take take a calculated chance you know on my business i've had to do that and i've realized also that you know growing organically for small businesses is beautiful um, it reduces the risk of wasting money. Most times when we feel like we have a lot of uh, money in our hands, what we do is that we take on too many staff that we don't need. Um, we um, delegate a bit too much. Delegation is not bad. However, when you're starting a business, it's best that you know, you know the rudiments of it. You might not know everything, but you need to have an idea of what people are talking about. If not, they're just going to, they're going to play with you. And they're going to play with your business. Um, so first off, you need to fund yourself and take a calculated chance on your business. And then next off, when you have created structure, uh, I cannot say it enough. Um, there, need to, there needs to be processes that people can see. There needs to be some sort of accountability. And the best way for you to finally be able to approach uh, uh, financial um, institution funding is when they have seen that you have placed all these processes. You've put all these processes in place. Next up, something that people take for granted a lot is an advisory board. An advisory board sometimes does not have to be paid. And so um, you employ the use of people who would, who sometimes you would never be able to converse with on a normal day. You know, knowing that you've put all these processes in place, you write them a letter, you know, a proper letter, and then you request for them to get on the advisory board. Trust me, once you've done this and people can see, oh, this lady takes or this person takes their business seriously, um, it's so much easier for them to um, want to fund your business. And then another thing is most people are looking for funding from financial institutions. That's fine. However, funding can come from different areas. And that's just by people, I mean, people seeing the way you go about your business. It's easy. You want funding from me. No problem. I'm just going to ask you for your statement in the past six months and we'll see if you uh, are worthy of funding first off you know if we see shawarma you know with your business account <laughs> you know if we see that you're sending money to um the lady who maybe wigs your hair from your business account are you joking how am i going to give you fun you're literally just going to splurge and live life you know on your own terms it is not about the business here it's about you making money to um, you know, manage this in your lifestyle and it cannot work. So when you're requesting for funding, make sure that you've done due diligence, you know, on your own part, you are not messing around with the small funds that you get at the moment. And so you can have, you know, the confidence to meet someone who has, um, who um, is, who you look up to or who has funds to spare. And you show them these things and you show them that you have people that you are accountable to, people that you report to, most times why people are afraid is because they don't know if there's anybody, you know, that you, you report to or you're accountable to. When you are Lord and master of your own business, there's no way anybody can tell you, no, this is bad. Stop this. Or, you know, we need to save here. We need to do this here. Make sure you have an advisory board on. Make sure that you are reaching out to not just financial institutions, but other people who you feel are interested in investment. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you have some sort of discipline. There's no way you won't get funded. 
no way. Awesome. Thank you so much. So as a, maybe as an entrepreneur, I've already gotten the funding or maybe I don't require that much capital to start. What would you say has been your biggest driver of visibility for the companies that you have founded? Okay. How, have, um, how do I go about getting my customers? That's the question. Um, I know that a lot of people would want me to say referrals here. And for me, it has been referrals. But aside from referrals, there's work you need to do by yourself. And um, this work, you cannot do it banking on referrals. People need to be able to trust your brand. There needs to be brand trust. And so you need to invest in branding from jump. Um, people want to do everything by themselves. And so you see uh, people who think that they're cutting costs by, you know, not um, having a, even if it is not a team, that you have on a daily basis, creating contracts with people that matter. Brand perception is a big thing. So you need to invest in one, a graphics artist from jump. Make sure that you know you have brand, brand colors that people can relate with. Make sure that when you're sharing information that you do it excellently. So it's not um, you creating um, very, very raw um, TikTok videos of just you. You can't be doing everything. You know, you need to also employ the use of, um, what do we call it? Technology. And Flutterwave has made it very, very easy for people. Imagine, you know, the chance that Flutterwave has given people to be able to um, open stores. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing like it. Imagine going to a page and you see WhatsApp number. Are you going to take them seriously? No. But with the Flutterwave store, you know, even if you've just started, even if this is just three months in, I have some sort of brand trust because I feel like this person has put in the work. She created a mini website. You know, she knows what she's talking about. I don't have to reach her for everything. I have FAQs that answer most of my questions. You know, I have a portal to pay where I'm not paying directly to somebody. I know I'm paying to a, a brand I already trust, Flutter with, and then it gets to that person. Just doing these small things that even you, would consider when you want to buy something from someone else. Making your clients, you know, comfortable and uh, feel like she's not giving her money away. Those are the ways that you can um, inculcate brand trust and then get people to spread your brand by themselves. You know, people like to jump on what's new, what's, what's, um, what looks like it. So make your brand that it with the small funds that you have. Don't try to eat everything. Make sure that you invest in people who can come in and then help you build that business, build that brand. So basically, the, the, the answer is, number one, grow brand trust and think as the customer when you're thinking about brand, brand trust in terms yeah. of what your branding looks like, the platforms that you utilize and everything. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. also, um, that way, when you grow brand trust and when you give your customers a great service, they will use word of mouth to get you visibility, right? Yeah. That's, that's okay. The yeah. next question would be, speaking specifically, what would you say has been your biggest marketing driver at Shom? At Shom, sorry. Uh, okay. Um, I would say that it has been, uh, it has been just embracing digital um it has been being it has been just embracing digital that's 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 it um most times you see people who feel like um no don't post on instagram no you're just going to be acting like a baby no you don't post every day just post once so that you look like you have sense you have your mature etc find where your customers are going take for instance um someone who's in hr they really don't have that much business on Instagram. That's the truth. Where their market is, is where? LinkedIn. And so you find that market and you stick there. Take, for instance, people who are selling an experience. Your market, yes, on Instagram. However, if you are waiting until TikTok stop, stops looking like a children's platform, you're going to be giving your customers away because they are there for the experience. And trust me, it's even better and bigger on TikTok. So find where your customers are. Sit down there. Master it. 
master it. So what has helped a lot is our ability to look and say, you know what, uh, we're not bigger than this. We're going to find a way to master, you know, where our clients are and make the best out of it. We've been able to do that with Instagram. Um, we've been able to um, do that even on TikTok. We've been able to do that. Um, where else? We're trying to do that with YouTube. I, you know, I see a lot of people who just sit in one spot and they're like, you know what? I'm not going to try. I have an Instagram following. You're joking. One day, you know, Mark decides that he wants to delete all the followers on Instagram and you have no clients. Find a way to embrace digital. Find a way to embrace digital. Ensure that your website is working. If you cannot afford a website, Butterwave has made it super easy. Embrace that. When they tell you there's something they're doing for free, please take advantage of it and utilize it. Utilize digital. Utilize it. That's the future of retail. That's the future of the beauty business. Remember that we are all um, dealing with people who want to look like what they see virtually. Uh, so with the beauty business, you need to embrace digital. We've been able to do that, and I hope that you do too. Thank you for that. So basically, would you say that in finding, in going digital and notifying, mm -hmm. basically identifying your target audience, you still kind of need to segment them so you know which one works. So like maybe you are saying your target audience is women and then what age group mm -hmm. do, they, do mm -hmm. those women fall under? And what platforms do those women, as a result of their age group and their lifestyle, what, what platforms do they utilize? Mm -hmm. Some people are on Twitter. Mm -hmm you want to reach them on Twitter and the way you speak to them on Twitter is different from the people that are on Instagram or TikTok mm -hmm. and the way you yeah. speak to them and the kind of content that you do as well. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. You need to segment content and then also look for ways to tweak this, you know, depending on the platform that you're on. Definitely. Definitely. So you speak in words that they can hear. And another thing is, you know, uh, most of us like to speak in terms that we understand. I, I realize that this is an issue for most. Where you're writing something and then you're writing, I, I remember we used to have this issue a lot where we would write hyperpigmentation and um, what do we call it? Uh, milia. Mm. Those are terms that people use. Hyperpigmentation is literally the same thing as spots. It depends on the, um, uh, the, the gravity of the spots now. It could be a sunburn. Why don't you use words that people understand? Right. That way they connect to your brand. Another thing is milia. For goodness sakes, that is acne. How else do you know the word acne? You know it as people. So use the words that people know. They connect easily. And so it's easier for them to tell you, ah, this person, even if they're not using your brand, when someone asks them, ah, please, well, how, do you, um, how do you think I can solve this issue? The first brand that comes to mind is yours because they connected it so yeah and you're speaking in the tone in the tone of your customer you're not using terms they don't understand great thank you so how would you say that has the pandemic affected trump group in any way and how have you <clears throat> adapted to it um the pandemic has affected uh, the business uh yeah however the good that has come of it I would say outweighs all the bad. We are better prepared for um, acts of God. Previously, uh, people, we thought that life would be, you know, the same way. This has shown us that life truly happens and events happen that you, you know, you have no control over. So why don't you try and find some sort of control and some sort of backup if this, this thing happens again? Because it will happen again. Um, so we've been able to, with the pandemic, um, we had to close down a couple of stores. First off, you need to be very honest with yourself. I like honesty. You know, if this store is there because of how, I mean, because of how you want to look on um, social media or in front of people's eyes, then you're just joking. You're going to run yourself to the ground. You need to um, put ego aside and think about the future of your business one and the future of the team members on it. Most times when people um, talk about this pandemic, I think it's a very, very selfish thing to say, you know what, um, it has affected the business and so we're going to just have to stop this. We're going to reduce people's salaries. 
they didn't beg you not to have business acumen. <clears throat> the people you hire, you need to go learn it. So first off, I think you need to go, I had to go relearn what it meant to run a business in the first place. I had to go relearn business administration. And then secondly, I looked out for my team. It wasn't easy. I didn't have um, all the money in the world, but I made it very clear that they were important to me. Why? Because when this pandemic is over, and the truth is the pandemic will be over, what will you start from? You start with a new team, or even if you have these people still working, in what conditions? Are you empathetic in any way? How will they relate with your customers and with your clients? There is no sense of investment in the business anymore because they know that, you know, once there's an issue, this person is only looking out for herself, himself, and just the business. So first off, go hard for your team. Um, it, and that is subjective to everybody. It might not be in form of funds. The fact that you care and then you share with them medical aid that you have, or you send them sanitizers and you send them face masks, you check up on them, you send them food, you share food, you know, with these people. If your business is still small and you can afford to do that, do these things and go hard for your team. And then it will be so much easier for you to beat the pandemic because they will all join forces regardless of how much you pay them because they know that you care about them. They will truly help you beat this pandemic. You cannot beat the pandemic without a solid team, right? And then um, you cannot beat this pandemic with the, the way you knew how to do business previously. We were all used to... Um, time with orders of oh I went to I went to work no problem when I get back my order will be waiting for me sometimes people are working from home now so they are truly waiting on you say two hours where's my order it's supposed to have gotten here in two hours so find ways to make your client feel like they have won in some way if you cannot get the order to them on time make sure that the experience is beautiful and make sure that the value they get when they finally get this is worth the wait. Do you understand? So with the pandemic, the ways we've been able to beat it have been optimizing our websites, taking advantage of all the options that we have for free with Google credits Flutterwave gave, with um, the store that Flutterwave gave, um, and then making sure that the experience was worth it at the end of the day for our client. And so they always come back. So it's important to take into account the experience of your of your staff and your team because they are they should know that they are priority, and then also you need to take advantage of the resources available to you as a business so that you can survive the pandemic as well. So what would you say is one of the biggest? This is this is my last question before we go into the nap session, and then we'll come back for Q and A. If um, I've answered, we've answered some of the questions that people have asked, but we'll come back for Q and A if there are more questions. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you have learned? One, as a result of the pandemic, but two, as a beauty entrepreneur. The biggest lesson I've learned is. There are many lessons, but I've learned that um, profit is subjective um, and profit is really not everything. There are so many opportunities. The truth is pandemic has brought a lot of opportunities, tons of opportunities for people to make money. You know, However, um, when you look at what you've lost, the time that you lose while trying to make that money, um, is that... Is monetary profit everything? No, it's not. I can tell you for certain. I can give you a very honest, um, what's the name? Um, my own um, experience. So we started out making sanitizers during this time and I had orders, you know, all over Nigeria. And we made money from it. However, we made revenue from it. I did this for impact. When I looked at it, the amount of time I spent creating these sanitizers, ETC, these sanitizing gels, it was not worth it. 
So I had revenue, revenue coming, but it was not worth it. My business suffered for it. Um, I was stressed because of it. The money did not make any sense. So sometimes it's really not just about monetary profit. Look at peace of mind as some sort of profit. Look at um, impact it has on other people as profit. So it's really not just about profit. And then another lesson I've learned is to really trust intuition. When, it, when you've put in the work, uh, trust intuition. Um, if you're not meant to have this business deal with this person, if you feel off about it, please go do your underground work first. You know, do your own research before you um, engage in any lasting or binding ties with anyone. Because the truth is, money changes everybody. People lose their minds where money is concerned. And one, you want to keep integrity. Uh, two, you want to keep relationships. So if this is going to destroy a relationship just because of money, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Thank you so much, Nancy. This was, I think, very impactful. Also, we got a chance to kind of get a glimpse into how you operate and run your business and the principles that you run your business with. And I think that people have been able to take away a lot of lessons. So I'm going to pass everyone over to Zainab now so she can go into the Flutter Wave session. And then we'll come back for Q&A because um, I see we, we have three questions, but there might be more questions after Zainab's session. So we'll come back for them. Thank you. All right, then. Bye. Thank you, Wendy. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'll just go right into it uh, because of time. Let me share my screen quickly. Right, so I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, today, I'll just run us through some of the things that Flutterwave, um, some of the initiatives that Flutterwave has got going for uh, business owners this period. Um, pandemic period, so to speak, and also um, these same initiatives are applicable even post-COVID area, right? Um, the first one I will talk about is the Grow My Business webinar, which we all know. Um, this is what, the 15th edition, I think? So we've been doing this for over three months now. Um, the idea behind the Grow My Business webinar is just to equip small business owners with the right tools, information, materials, and access that you need to scale um, during this period. And not just you know, during the COVID period, also the post-COVID, these are still very vital um, tools that you need to have, information, which is lasting. Um, and then we have speakers from different industries come talk to us about um, their experience, you know, how they were able to scale, if they had to pivot, you know, all of that. Um, is discussed at the Grow My Business webinar. So it holds every Monday by 10, that's the Nigerian time. Um, if you know any business owner um, within Nigeria, Africa, just let them know, they can tune in, it's free. And we have so many um, industry experts come talk to us about different things, different fields, be it marketing, customer experience, um, in-depth knowledge about you know, different fields, whether it's beauty. Last week, we had somebody from the agri-tech business talk, talk to us about you know, what you can do to scale in that particular field. So we have um, different industry experts come talk to us and it's actually very valuable. You get um, very good first-hand information from these experts. And just like Wendy said, right after the webinar, um, the next day or so, you get um, all the materials that um, are discussed during the webinar. So you get access to the video recording. Um, if there are materials to be shared, you also have access to those as well. So please let everyone know about the Grow My Business webinar hoods every Monday by 10 a.m. Nigerian time. Right. Um, I'm sure you also heard Nancy mention something about Google, right? So as Flutterwave, um, as a company, we have partnered with Google. And the idea behind this partnership is to empower SMEs again um, in Nigeria and um, Africa as well. So sometime in the early um, months of the year, we had um, an event, the digital business compass. I don't know how many of us attended that. Um, it was supposed to hold every quarter, um, physical event that is. However, because of the um, pandemic, you know, that hasn't held. But the partnership is still very much in place. And part of that partnership is providing business owners with 
um, free listing on Google My Business. So Google My Business is a tool that allows businesses to showcase um, their product offerings um, on Google. So when a Google search is done um, about your business, your business details are displayed on the first page of that search result. Um, details such as where you're located, what you do. You can even upload images. So if you like have products, for example, if you're in you know, beauty and skincare and you have some products that you sell, you can upload images of those products. You know, you have like the call button, you know, people can call you directly from that search. Um, so many other things, so many other features. So your opening hours, your closing hours, you know, all that um, detail is displayed on a Google search for free. Um, that's if you are listed on Google My Business. So how to take advantage of this is um, based on the partnership we have with Google, it's absolutely free. So again, um, after this webinar, I think tomorrow, um, an email will be shared, which would have a link for you to opt into um, that service. So the Google My Business service is free. If you're interested, just click on the link and then you'd have a Google representative um, contact you and get more information from you to profile your business. So the reason why this is very important is, you know, everybody's online now, just like we've said, even though, yes, there's been um, a lifting of the lockdown, you know, the truth is, um, the customer behavior is changing, right? Most people would rather not physically go to locations. So they would rather just do everything they need to do online, you know, do their searches, do their shopping, do everything they want to do online because um, they want to stay, you know, home where it's um, nice and safe and there's no um, virus. So that brings us to our third initiative, which is called the Flutter Wave Store. Um, Flutter Wave Store, quite simply, is the best and easiest way um, for businesses to launch and manage an e-commerce platform. It accepts payments, you know, from local customers, from international customers. It allows you list your products, upload pictures, prices, sizes, images, um, every, you know, other product description that you have. You can do all that, upload it, and then share your store link with your customers. So it's basically just giving you your own website where you can list your products and then you can share that um, link with your customers to buy. So um, just like I said earlier, this is as a result of you know, what is currently happening um, in Nigeria and really around the world. Um, but if you go beyond what's happening, this is actually a must have tool for every business owner because if you don't have an online presence now you know especially then you're literally out of business you know and we understand that not everyone has the resources to decide to build um, a website you know it goes beyond just building a website you have to maintain it right you have to you know pay a monthly um, or a yearly subscription fee and all of that so that whole process of having to maintain a website not everyone is keen on it there's nothing wrong with having a website right but if you're just a business owner you just want to share um, your products online for people to be able to pay you and you get your notification you get your money then this is the perfect solution for you so the idea came as a result of the pandemic we found ourselves in you know to help um, business owners still thrive remain open keep the lights on and then even go beyond that to scale their business internationally um, another advantage of the flutter wave store is that it has delivery option integrated so this is just optional for those who don't already have um, their logistics um, sorted out so what this means is if you have um, a clothing store for example a physical clothing store and you, today you have someone who comes to pick up those um, clothes when, whenever an order is made um, and you're fine with using them then that's fine but however if you want to transition your store online maybe you don't really have um, a delivery company or you have one but you're not too comfortable with them then Flutterwave has a delivery partner integrated to Flutterwave store. So what that means is once you list all of your products on the store, um, you can go ahead and share that link with your customers, whether on um, social media, you, you can put it on your Instagram bio page, or you can send it as an email, you know, blast or WhatsApp forwarded message, whatever it is, wherever your customers are, you can just share that link with them. So um, instead of having to 
maybe on WhatsApp today, sending products one by one. People are now asking how much is this? You know, that whole back and forth process is completely eliminated with the Plus Two Wave store because once you share that link and the customer clicks on the link, then he sees the list of all the products that you have. Um, and then he can just go ahead and um, select what he wants, clicks on the item, he sees the price, he sees everything about the item. He adds it to his cart and then he's able to just um, make a payment instantly. So once he makes a payment, um, assuming this customer that sells clothes um, somewhere in um, Ogba, for example, right? Um, he has listed all his clothes and everything that he has on his Flosswave store. He has shared that link to his customer, um, telling the customer, I guess what, I have new arrivals. So here's the link. Just check anything you want. Click on it add it to your cart, pay, and all that is sorted out. So the customer clicks on the link. He sees the list of all the clothes that the customer, um, that the merchant has for sale, um, selects maybe um, a dress for 10,000 Naira, adds that dress to his cart, and then checks out, right? So at the point of checkout, you have to put in all your information, you know, which is a normal process for every e-commerce transaction. So you put in your name, your um, delivery address, phone number, all that information, you put it in. And then you click on um, pay. So if this clothing store is using the Flutterway delivery option, then um, there's, a, there's an algorithm that calculates how much that um, delivery is going to cost. So assuming um, the customer is in Lekki and then you know the clothing store is in Oba, there's um, a calculation that automatically that um, determines how much it's going to be. So let's say 1,500, for example, um, the dress is 10,000 Naira, the delivery is 1,500. At the point of checkout, I will be paying 11,500, right? So the person who owns the clothing store gets his 10,000 Naira. Um, the delivery company get their 1,500 and then the delivery company contacts the clothing store to say, okay, I just got a notification um, of a delivery that I need to pick up from you in Ogba and deliver to Lekki Phase 1. So, of course, every transaction comes with a unique transaction um, number and, and order number. So, the seller of the clothing items, just checks the order number and sees, okay, this is a particular address this person has paid for. He just gets it ready. The delivery company comes to his office or shop, wherever the next day, picks it up and delivers to the customer in Lekki. Very straightforward, end to end. So we've taken care of delivery for you. Remember I said this delivery for um, with Flutterwave is optional, right? So you as a business owner can decide to set up your own delivery yourself if you do not want to use um, the Flutterwave integrated delivery that is also available. So um, why do you need to have a Flutterwave store? Like I said, it's very seamless. It's very straightforward. To set up your store takes less than five minutes, really. Um, you're good to go in five minutes. It's nothing, it's nothing um, technical, right? You don't need to do any form of integration. There's no API exchange. It's very straightforward. Um, once you set up your store, you're able to upload images, um, put in descriptions such as sizes, quantity, and all of that. Another very important um, thing to note is it helps you with inventory management. Or what does this mean? So if you sell like um, a lot of items, for example, you have maybe a thousand items of different um, categories, right? At the point of setting up your store, you can put in the exact number. So for example, if we use a um, beauty um, industry as a, um, as a use case, uh, maybe at the point of setting up your store, you have um, 300 body oils, 400 body scrubs, maybe uh, 600 body lotions and all of that. And then your orders are coming in. You don't need to, every time you get an order, say, okay, hold on, let me confirm and see how many, you know, how many stock I have left. With the Flutterwave store, the inventory management helps you to determine that because as the sales, I mean, at the point of setup, you already know how many of each of these items you have. So you put it, you know, and it shows at the back end. So all these numbers are there. And then as people are buying them, the numbers are getting depleted. So for example, if you have um, 500 body oils, right, that you upload on Monday, and then by Tuesday, you've sold 50. What you see left is 450. So the number just 
keeps on depleting until it's completely sold. So you don't need to worry about, okay, let me confirm if I have this in stock. Of course, when your um, numbers are getting low, you also get a notification um, telling you that you're running low on stock. And then when it's completely sold out, you um, will not be able to make any more um, sales on that particular item because the customer would see um, item is sold out. So it helps you with your inventory management system. Um, like I said earlier, it also comes with integrated delivery. Um, we have multiple payment options as well. Um, so if you're paying online and maybe you find that you don't have your card with you, you have bank transfer payment option. Um, if you find that maybe you don't want to use bank transfer, we also have USSD and um, QR code. So it's very easy to set up. You don't need a website developer, like I said. Um, and it also accepts local and international card payments, which is very important, especially for people who have customers outside of Nigeria, right? You know, excuse me, you know, the very common thing to say is um, you just send your bank account details. Well, sometimes they tell you oh, they can't do a transfer and all that. But with the Flutterwave store, they, you just send them that same link, they select what they want, and then they are able to pay with their bank card. So regardless of what bank card it is, it will still accept the card and process that payment so you get your funds even from um, customers outside of Nigeria. So yeah, so this is just um, a screen grab of what the payment page looks like. Um, I'll just show us a very short video to see um, the end-to-end -end setup of a store as well as a transaction. So I know I've been saying it's very seamless, it's fast, it's straightforward. Don't just take my word for it. I'm going to show you um, a video that will show that will show yeah end-to-end -end, um, of setting up the store and actually carrying out a transaction. Very important to note is with every payment on Flutterwave store, the customer. Um, um, that's the person buying gets an electronic receipt, which is, you know, mostly not available today. If you just decide to sell on Instagram and then people are just doing transfers to you and all of that. If you are selling on Flutterwave store, um, the person paying you, that's the card holder, the customer gets an electronic receipt sent to their email. You, the seller, that's the business owner, you also get um, a notification of payment. And then the um, delivery company also gets a notification. That's if you're using Flutterwave integrated delivery. So that um, tripartite um, end of each user gets something to show that this transaction has been completed. It's important to also note that with every electronic payment um, as a business owner, you have access to these customers, which is very important because you can now use um, that information for or other um, to engage further with your customers. So today, if you have just like a physical store, somebody just walks in, buys an item from you and walks out. Um, chances are you don't really have any information about that customer, right? You might just know the person's name, maybe because you asked to write a receipt. But these days, people don't even do that, right? You just do a payment on the POS and you walk out. You don't know anything about the customer that has just bought from you. Right. So how do you reach out to the customer the next time? If you have uh, new stock, new items, new variations, how do you get back to the customer? That's where Flutterwave Store comes in as well. So with Flutterwave Store, um, not just um, is a payment just going to happen. You have information about that customer, right? You have their phone number, you have their email address, you know where they live. So for example, if you're thinking of um, expanding, right, and then you see that you have quite a lot of customers in a particular part of the country or maybe in a particular part of the state, that could guide your information on what sort of decisions to make about your business next. So for example, you're based in Lagos and then you see that maybe 70 or 80 percent of your sales are coming from Abuja. That's an indication that you have a market in Abuja. So you might want to think about, you know, setting up, you know, a location there. Just, you know, those sort of information are available. Um, not just this, you also have access to data and customer Customer analytics on your Flutterwave dashboard. So what can you do with this information? The kind of information provided are the time of the day when transactions happen, you know, the gender, you know, the, the location, all that information is available to you. So it helps you make um, intelligent decisions about your business. So for example, you want to have a sales, um, a flash sales, for example, and then you go to your 
Flutterwave dashboard to check out your customer analytics over the last one month. And then you see that you have more people doing transactions in the evening, say between um, 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. That's when most of your customers are online. So that tells you that if you want to do um, a flash sales to make the most of it that flash sale has to be in the evening so you can now come to social media or send an email saying flash sales between 6 p.m and 8 p.m anything you buy 10 percent off you know so that is the kind of information that you know flutterwave provides business owners to help them you know make intelligent decisions about the business to help them scale so it goes beyond just buying and selling this time around you're able to um engage closer with your customer, right? And that builds customer stickiness. So imagine you have their email address, maybe you can decide to send them an email um, telling them, oh, guess what? We have new stock, new arrivals have come in. Uh, or we, you can say things like, we noticed you bought the red pair of shoes the last time. Guess what? We have orange available now. That sort of thing, you know, would make your customers endear towards you um, more and also builds customer stickiness. So it becomes difficult for these customers to leave your business and want to go to competition. So these are the advantages of having a Flutterwave store. Um, very quickly, I'll just show us a very short video, literally five minutes or less, um, on how to go about setting up your Flutterwave store. Um, where's the link? Right. I hope everyone can still see my screen. Um, yeah. My name is Ted, and I am a product designer at Flutterwave. I want to walk you through what we've been building for the past couple of days. Welcome to my dashboard. I'm going to walk us through two processes. The first process is how to set up your store and add products to the store. The second process will be how your customers will pay you and use your store. So I'm going to click on the store. Um, by default, you have no products or store. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my own store now. My business name is my store name by default. I'm going to go and change mine to something else. I'm going to go with drinks and let's see, fun. You notice that I updated my store URL to reflect my store name. I am going to leave my store offline because I want to add products to my store before I take it live. I have successfully created my store I now have my store name and my store URL. My URL is what I'm going to share with my customers for them to be able to make payments. You can only have one store on your Flutter web account. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add just one product. It's good to know that you can have more than one product. I'm going to go ahead and call this Tiger Nut Milk. I got a mail goes for about 1,000 naira right now. Milk that's made from Tiger Nut. I'm just going to go with 0.28 and I have 10 items in stock. Next step is to take my store online. Now my store is online. I am going to proceed to the customer page, which is basically your storefront. As you can see here, drinks and fun as the name of my store. Flutterwave store demo is the name of my account. We have here the description of my store. Um, as you can see, Tiger Nut Milk, I'm going to go ahead and add two bottles of Tiger Nut Milk. Click on pay. I'm going to go ahead and refill this. Now we have a lot of payment options. You can give your customers a lot of payment options. 
Okay, so um, that's the video just showing us how to set up your store and how to also um, send the link to your customers to pay you. Um, and that brings me to the end of my presentation. Okay, um, I guess we can take questions now. Wendy, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Zina. Um, <clears throat> we have some questions on delivery um, and discounts, which I think you can just answer. Um, can, can a discount feature be added to the store? Someone wants to know. Okay, so that feature is not available today as we speak, but we've gotten um, a number of requests for this. So it's something okay um so the next question is does flutterwave integrated delivery deliver internationally that's a very interesting question um, so for now, the integration that we've got is just for within Nigeria, right? So we want to be sure um, that that works perfectly well before we replicate it to outside of Nigeria. Um, but like I said, you know, because I know a couple of people on store today who have customers outside of Nigeria, and then they just go ahead and use, you know, maybe like a DHL or whatever that's not um currently integrated so you can actually still just receive your payment and then go ahead and use you know any other delivery company for international for now okay um someone has asked what of the what the of goods can be sold i'm guessing this question is what kind of goods can be sold on flutterwave um but i think if you can just go into a little bit more detail on what kind of goods and then yeah so what kind of goods, excuse me, I think um, any good that is, you know, not contraband, <laughs> anything that's legitimate, right, can be sold, you know, anything from Anything you can think of that is, you know, not contraband can be sold on Plus Wave Store. Yeah. Um, so there's another question here. Can we please get a copy of this webinar? Um, the answer to that is yes. You will be getting um, an email, I think, by tomorrow. So that email will contain um, the link to the web webinar, yes. um, any other material. And then, yeah, at opening for Google My Business. So the email will contain all of that. Okay. Um, last okay. question that we have is, are there any charges when you set up the store and it goes public? I think you can talk about how, yeah. And you can also go into our pricing as a company. So there are no charges to sign up on Flutterway for the merchant um, so what that means is if you are selling on 10,000 Naira the transaction charge is 1.4% for local cards and 3.8% for international cards so the 1.4% is capped at 2,000 Naira um, what that means is if you're selling an item that's 10,000 Naira right 1.4% of that is 140 Naira so you as the seller will be getting um, 9,860, right, for that item because 140 Naira will be taken as a transaction charge. The person paying will be paying the full 10,000 Naira, but you would be getting um, the 10,000 less 150. Now, if it's a transaction that say worth 500,000 Naira, now 1.4% of 500,000 so not cards for international cards 3.8% to sign up on the platform is free there's no charge to sign up yeah i hope i've answered that question um, there's another question here that says used or brand new I'm not sure what that means, but if you're asking if you can sell items that are not new, 
Um, the answer is yes. We have quite a lot of people that sell thrift items, so thrift um, clothes, shoes, bags, and all that. They sell that as well. So um, the answer is yes, you can sell used or brand new ball. It's always good to put that in your description, your store description. So your store description would be your business name, dealers of thrift or pre-loved items, right? So people know um, what they're buying. Um, we also have a question about, do I need to have a website before I can sell on Flutterwave? Um, no, because the whole idea of Flutterwave store is that it's basically a digital storefront for you. It's an e-commerce platform or you can view it as a mini website where you can sell, receive payments, and then also have orders delivered as well. So you don't need to have a website before you can sell on Flutterwave because that would defeat the purpose of us having <laughs> Flutterwave store. Um, yeah, so there's no need for that. Um, there's one more question, Zainab. Um, do international charges also have a cap? I think that's the last. No, one. unfortunately, they don't. International charges don't have a cap. Yeah. But so for local charges. Yeah. For local charges, there's a cap of at two thousand naira. We won't charge you more than two thousand naira per transaction. But for international charge transactions, there is no cap. But you, we do have a pricing page on our website. We we pride ourselves on being very transparent. So we do have a pricing page on our website. You can visit flutterwave.com forward slash pricing to see the pricing for each country. And that will help in making a decision as well. So I think that we have come to the end of our questions, um, which means that we have, is there a new question that I'm missing? Is Flutterwave mobile app accessible? Um, we do not have a mobile app. We have Bata, which is our consumer product. It's a different product from Flutterwave for business, which is our business product. But our Flutterwave dashboard for our business product is highly mobile responsive. And so you can ask your questions, or sorry, you can use that. But if you have any issues, please send us an email. We will be able to answer any other questions that you have. I think we have officially come to the end of this week's webinar. Um, first of all, huge, huge thank you to Nancy for joining us today. Um, her session was very, very impactful. Um, you're on mute. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much. We, we really gained a lot. Um, thank you, Zainab. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We are recording and have recorded this. We are going to upload it on YouTube and we will share the link with you. So the link is going to be accessible exclusively to you for like a week uh, before we share it with our public and add it to the public listing. Thank you so much everyone for joining us. Have a brilliant and wonderful week.